Hi everyone, I am finally doing a book review for our June read, which was Killing the Kryptonite. I am so sorry that I'm behind on this, but what I want to say is I may be behind, but I'm still reading, so that's an encouragement. I'm here to read with you, keep each other accountable. Um, it was 4th of July week, so everybody knows how that goes with our family, traveling, lake house, came home, and now we're preparing for my daughter's grad party next weekend, so busy, 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 and I finally said I'm doing my review on Monday uh, morning, posting it, and I'm already going on into the July read, so... We may be behind a little bit, but I'm still reading, and I will not miss out on doing a book review for Killing the Kryptonite, because if you did not read this book with me for this um, month, I'm encouraging you to read this book at some point, because if you're a believer, this book is going to show you how sin acts as the kryptonite, and slowly, slowly... Um, in a sneaky way, sneaks in our lives, and we don't even recognize it. And it just kind of slowly takes over in our relationships, and our family, and our personal life, and our emotional life. So it is such a huge read. So what I'm going to do is um, kind of going to give you a couple quotes of people that have read this book, like Christine Kane and Jensen Franklin, two amazing uh, Christian speakers that I highly look up to. I want to just kind of give you what they say about the book. Then I have notes to the whole book. The way that I read my books is I'm a highlighter. I take a highlighter, and a highlighter is always with me, and I mark up my pages. At the very end of the book, I do a complete review in a notebook. So I have a notebook, which is right here, in the back of this, and I'll do a little review on what that book was about based on all my notes. And then I kind of categorize my books on my bookshelf. I cannot wait to the day where I build a library, and because I actually have some books like in boxes, and I can categorize books according to being challenging, um, just a devotional that you want to read one morning with a cup of coffee, or things about you know the enemy, maybe things about um, our prayer life. I mean, there's so many different different types of books that I have, you know, as far as empowerment, self empowerment, but knowing that we need God confidence and not self confidence, those type of books. I'm kind of going off a little bit spider webbing, but I'm letting you know that I organize my books and I organize my thoughts. It's so important because books will motivate us. So I want to tell you today how this book actually motivated me. And I'm telling you, get it on your reading list. If you did not read it with me, get it on there. Um, Killing the Kryptonite exposes the enemy's greatest ploy to steal your strength and keep you from your destiny. In this book, John, this book is by John Bevere, Lisa Bevere's husband, he will challenge you to be aware of the enemy and equip you to fight back with the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. How powerful is that? Now, Judson Franklin says, in Killing the Kryptonite, John Bevere clearly demonstrates the strongholds that can prevent us from filling our full potential in Christ. This book is powerful, it's very direct. And it will bring readers face to face with their personal kryptonite in their lives. So, so, so powerful. So God has an amazing calling for us, bottom line. But this book is going to challenge you in ways to understand how the enemy is stealing your calling. And if we don't recognize that and we don't recognize God's divine nature in our life, then the enemy's work is done. He can kind of just stay really um, sneaky in our lives and just stay comfortable and not have to do anything crazy because if we're in a place where we feel comfortable but we can't identify the sin, then that's exactly where the enemy wants to keep us. And I'm telling you, I, I, I woke up to some truths in this book and recognized some unnoticed sin in my own lives, in my own life and in the lives around me. And I thought, ooh, we got to nip this in the butt. Like, I didn't even see this. So there was some definite um, times here. Also, what I loved about this book is some books will have questions along the way or journal questions or devotionals. At the end of every single chapter, there was a section that just said, take notice, take action. And it gave you a few questions to journal in a page in the book. So that was really nice. I used every one of those pages. So let's jump in. 
Um, it talks about in the first chapter, you know, killing the kryptonite. What does that even mean? Is this book about Superman? No, but he's going to give you the striking parallels of that. And so the first tra chapter kind of gives you those par parallels. But now let me get into the notes that were life-changing for me. Everybody has, if you read this, you will have your own life-changing um, notes. But I was definitely uplifted and encouraged. So in the first part where I'm here, um, I just liked, there was a verse that jumped out. and It says, in, um, when we as individuals walk in obedience to God's word, ultimately we are blessed. That is truth. We may go through an uncomfortable and even difficult times due to the disobedience of some in the body, but we will ultimately prosper. It went on to say that even though you're being obedient, say you're married and your spouse isn't saved or isn't a Christian and you're experiencing um, difficult times due to their disobedience. God is saying if we continue, in this book it was explaining not to give away to the kryptonite in their lives, but to be praying for them and to realize there's so much power in us staying obedient and doing what God's called us to do. And sometimes it's loving the hardships, loving the disobedience, praying for the disobedience until God gives us that peace maybe that we need to exit from that. But many times we run when God's at his biggest work. I know that happened in our marriage. Um, I'm, if you want to check out that whole story, you can order my run book um, at heatherbaxter.com uh, in my store. But in there is my testimony in my marriage. I could have ran, um, and hence why the book is called Run. But God asked me to just take a few steps back and learn to walk out some of his promises and run with them and watch what he will do in my marriage. And he had a lot of changing around to do in both my husband and I because the kryptonite, the silence of the enemy was so there, but we didn't recognize it. So again, powerful, depending on what, what level you are in your spiritual walk, what maturity you are in your relationship with God, this book could really, really hit hard or this book can really um, just kind of bring out some small things that are so subtle that the enemy does. So regardless of where you are in your Christianity or in your walk with God, this book will speak to you. Um, all right. So moving on, I highlighted this. Deep darkness is going to be upon the people, not just in geographic pockets, but the entire earth. We are living in a time of darkness, and it's growing deeper. We are drifting further and further from the heart of their creator. That is so true. We're seeing that in the news. I'm not speaking only of atheists, agnostics, or cults, but many who profess Christianity. This is the time when Paul, in the Bible, specifically states, People will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires. And will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears may hear. Now listen, there are places in the body of Christ, churches and pastors, that are just letting you know what you want to hear. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're hearing sound doctrine. That is very important. So authentic believers are going to shine and stand out. And the book was going on to say that we're not seeing that clearly today. We are not seeing authenticity in believers. So this chapter really spoke to me about what am I doing as a believer? Now, I'm going to get on to, okay, this was kind of like one of those, oh my gosh, I cannot believe he said it. Better that he said it because I don't want to say it. I don't want to post anything like this on Facebook because I'll be judged and, and you know, people will make comments to me, but we're, we're meant to stand out and say this. So this was convicting to me. Remember here, love the sinner, hate the sin because we are all sinners. Do not judge one another. So I'm going to read how he put this. The other root problem that is mentioned is, God, is not giving God thanks for ungratefulness. If we believe we're entitled to a certain lifestyle, now listen to this. If we believe we are entitled to a certain lifestyle, deserving a certain material thing, expect some sort of status, we are self-focused and consequently unthankful. After all, we worked hard, planned, set goals, dreamed up what we wanted to accomplish or create, so we have a feeling of pride in our own labor. And this is a way where the enemy sneaks in. He sneaks in in the area where we feel we're entitled to a certain lifestyle. Now listen to this fact, okay? Really seriously, this is crazy. Okay. On this note, homosexuality costs the government tens of billions of dollars. April 16th, 2015, it talks about how the government spent tens of billions of thousands of dollars to be able to create the human rights and the right word for what type of homosexuality, homosexuality you are. 
human sexuality. That's funny. Um, but basically, let's go back to how God created human beings. And this book talks about it. God created female and he created male. He is the one who decides our gender. He knows what is best because he loves us. And it goes on and it, and it talks about how wrong behavior and this entitled lifestyle has kept us in bondage to the lifestyle that we are never created for. It is, it is keeping people bondage, bonded, bond, in bondage emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Again, I have some great friends out there. My friends have some great friends out there. Would never judge the person. I'm just letting you know that society has brought about a lie in the human rights department. And this is a huge itch issue. And it's permitting um, individuals to begin to take on their own status that God never created. This is a kryptonite. The pages on this. I can't even go... On, on how the pages in this are letting us know that there is such a stronghold over our nation, hence why we are suffering so many um, different things uh, within the nation. So it's hardcore. He explains it hardcore. Read this part. It's awesome for discussion if you had a small group. Um, again, it's a choice to obey. God gives us free will. So if you're experiencing, I'm going to hit another, another page here because this was really good. If you're experiencing no peace, if you're struggling and striving, um, if you're, you're suffering with sicknesses, viruses, colds, physical ailments, and other things, maybe it's because you're not lining up with the truth of God. And look at our world. There's no peace in areas. We're struggling. We're striving. God's word already told us that in, in 1 Corinthians 11, 30 through 32, it took um, a lot of unnecessary hardships to finally see the idol, okay? The idol that some people in scripture were creating. I repented of my stubbornness and everything turned around almost immediately. So he's talking about um, many of you are weak and sick and have died, but if we examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. Now, in 1 Corinthians 11, 30 through um, 32, it explains that to us. But then we think of God as being mean. Oh my gosh, God's bringing down judgment. No, he wants you to live your best life. That's what this book is about, your purposes. And we go against that and we wonder why we struggle. This whole chapter, like all of this is on that. Awesome. Okay, jumping to the next part, the strength of sin in our life. Um, this was very helpful. This really helped me understand, this whole area helped me understand how um, we have desires, but do we ever ask if they're God's desires? We get married without asking Him. We jump into relationships out without asking Him. We commit in certain ways without asking Him, and then we wonder why we're in such a, a struggle and we're losing strength. And again, it's the silence um, kryptonite that made everything look so good in your life. And we're misguided. This whole chapter was on being um, silently misguided. I thought that was very, very pop, very popular, but very um, powerful. That's the word I want, not popular. Very powerful to see my own cravings and desires. Wow. That was just like, I'm being deceived on a daily basis. And I highlighted and jotted down a lot of ways in here that I'm being deceived in my marriages. I'm jotting down ways that I see my children are being deceived right through social media. Man, did the enemy win when he got a hold of um, apps and stuff like that on our phone. We do not need to be afraid, but we need to ask God for the power that he has given us to attack that. And this book will surely give you um, signs and um, areas in your life where you need to ask for that power and create new visions. And it, and it tells you how, how to apply that. So, um, Gosh, so good. So, 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 so good. Um, let me just jump on here and see if I can find a couple other highlighted notes. It's just so... Okay. So rich. So rich. Talks a lot about... Um... Oh, okay. Here we go. This is one of the last ones that I'll make. Because I try to keep these only 15 minutes and I can only a minute left, but that's okay. Um, this is a great idea. And let this be an illustration for you. You may enjoy this. Practice sin. How intentional sin leads into practice sin. You have missed the mark. You have veered off the path of life and you should make a course correction by re repenting and asking forgiveness. I mean, that's what we should do daily as a believer. 
Um, if at that point we forsake our sin, I'll hear it catch this, guys. We forsake our sin through genuine repentance and a heart, our heart is cleansed. We remain sensitive to the voice of God. That's where we want to be. Bingo. Asking God to reveal sin, um, asking him to cleanse it from all unrighteousness and staying sensitive to our voice. That's our goal. But here's where the kryptonite works. However, if we ignore the voice, which is so easy, I found this in my life in certain areas, ignoring that subtle voice, then a veil, picture of veil going over your heart, a little bit thicker, comes over and covers our heart. Now when we disobey again, we don't have such a deep, uncomfortable feeling. Rather, it's a small voice, an inward pinch or a little bit of a discomfort, so to speak. It's harder to hear because we're less sensitive. And then it goes on to talk again. If we ignore the vo voice again, then a veil comes over again and we even get weaker. And now we are just completely desensitized to sin. So he goes on and asks how we can constantly go to God and be restored, but how we don't, how the enemy keeps it so, he's just so subtle in, in having us no longer see sin. And this was powerful. So I'm just saying it's an awesome book. The enemy wants to steal, steal, and destroy your life, your children's life, your husband's life, your marriage, your dreams, everything. This will help you stay on top of it and let you see where the enemy's at work in our own world. So grab this and read it if you have not. And I'm going to go ahead and post um, the July book, but I'm going to post it over on my Instagram stories. So I want you to start following me. I do Instagram stories daily. I'm, I'm live all day long. It's really fun. So if you want to see what we're reading in July, follow me over to the Instagram stories. And this is a great book. We're going to have fun. So I hope this was a blessing to you and I will see you for the book review and we'll do it on time. The book review in July will be on time. So blessings and have an awesome day. Bye guys.